Hello and Happy New Year for those of you that do it. I hope you had a good Christmas and all that. If you're not watching this in real time and you don't do all that, then I just hope you're happy and that life is good. This is Real Magic Review where I've been going through the detritus of magic releases in order to find the good stuff. Now, I when I started this, the idea, well, one of the I started this for many reasons. Uh, one of the ideas was that I find magic that we may already have and understand that we don't always have to go for the new and shiny. There is so, there's so many good releases that, that got released years ago that we may have forgotten about because stuff when it's not new and shiny kind of loses its value a little bit to us. So the point is let's get the stuff out again and realize that we might have some really good material sort of tucked away in our magic drawers. And that's why this time we're gonna be reviewing a release from 2012, which I think is a real gem. This is RSVP's The Timeless project. So first of all, as usual, a couple of messages. Please go and check out Card Magic Course. This is my online course uh, where I answer questions and coach people through their magic journey. There's over 180 videos, loads of moves. Um, have a look at it, cardmagiccourse.com. You can get a free spread cull tutorial on cardmagiccourse.com forward slash spread cull. Um, otherwise, uh, just check out my, yeah, I mentioned this before, I've got an Instagram uh, channel. Oh, check, check out my Instagram, it's Card Magic Course on Instagram. It's not just all about the Card Magic Course, but there's Card Magic on there, and I do post the new reviews. And like and subscribe as well, that'd be lovely. Uh, like and subscribe down the bottom and click the bell so you get notifications. But on with the review. So as I said, this was released back in 2012. Uh, first of all, it was a deck of cards that was, that was released called the Timeless Deck from the late Bill Thompson, uh, who's a friend of Russ Stevens and then re released through RSVP. And this was a deck you could do a number of these tricks with. Uh, and so the Timeless Project is really an extension of this, an exploration into it. And, and obviously Gary Jones, Russ Stevens have got together and come up with some really cool effects around this deck. And they are very strong effects. Uh, the concept is time, as you would think. The, so even though it's cards, it doesn't feel like normal card tricks because each one has this theme around time. And, and magicians have always been fascinated with this, uh, as of people, I think, around time and time travel back and forward. And I think it really utilizes that well in a very graphic sort of visual way. So what do you get? You get the DVD, of course, but that box is a bit big, and that's because you get not one, but two decks of cards. Now, this isn't two of the same thing. Uh, first, I thought it might be a spare, but you get one, which is the original Timeless Date release, which is specially printed non-gaff deck. We're saying that it's got a couple of gaffs in it to enable you to do certain tricks, and the way the cards are printed is very, very important, uh, which we'll go into in a minute. Uh, and you get a gaff deck, so that's non-examinable. But to be honest, I've tried a couple of these tricks and not once, and it never will happen. People won't say, let me have a look at the cards. They're not thinking about the cards. They're thinking about the concept of time and, and the theme around these cards, and of course, the very strong effects. Um, and basically what it is, is that, that every picture card has a clock on it, next to the king or the jack or whatever, and every clock has a different time. So I'll go through the tricks very quickly. First of all, Time Warp is this one that uses just the young gimmick deck, uh, it does use a kind of gimmicky bit to it, but it doesn't use the, the big gaff deck. And uh, it's a really nice time travel routine. So a lot of us have done time travel ideas with decks of cards, but this brings a visual element into that, uh, which to me adds a little bit and makes it a little bit kind of eerie and weird. And we have just a second, which uses a watch where somebody sort of twiddles the sort of second hand of a watch and wherever they stop, you've kind of predicted a thing, but there's this little kicker. And again, an, another visual thing. Dual time is another way of finding someone's chosen time. So you say, what was your favorite time of the day? And you use both decks to find the time that they've said and, and then you use a second deck uh, to kind of, to expand on that. And for me, and I think for all of you, uh, the standout would be the second hand routine. Now, what happens is, and you can see this on the trailer, um, you say to someone, think of any hour of the day, you don't ask them what it is, you turn your back and you say, look at your own watch, and they look at their watch and you say, when the second hand hits your hour of the day, just say yes or whatever, um, and then I'll try and get it, I'll try and get the reading, so, or, or however you want to present it. Now, if you think about that, you're not looking at them when they're looking at their watch and they say, yes, I've got the second hand's hit the hour of the day, and then what you do, you do all the work, you've got the card, uh, in the deck, face down already, and it says one card face down, and then you say to them, what was the time of day? And then they tell you. So that is a, it's a fooled the hell out of me when I saw it. I had no idea. Now it's a concept apparently that's probably been around for a while, but I'd never heard of it. And really, really clever. But not clever for the sake of being clever. It's clever because it's really shrouded. You can't see how it's done. I could not see how this trick was done. Now some of you might, and you 
think I'm stupid, but but really got me. Um, and I think that that will be for lay people as well. I think that there's there's nothing they can really unpack in this to to, to work back to how you got this this trick. So it's a real beauty. It's a stunner. Something I think you could do on stage. Something that's perfect for parlor. And for me, definitely the cliche is is there. You know, it's worth the price of the DVD alone. But it requires a a, a watch. They've got to have a watch. You've got to have a watch. Now there are ways around this, and you can do it without that. But but if you want to do it as on the DVD, so the the sort of alternative version is this miracle clock routine or the timeless clock, which which you can do without any watches, and you just use the same kind of presentation, but you have this clock thing dealt out on the table. Um, so here's the here's the presentation of it, and like I said before, this is me performing it with not enough practice. This is how it'll probably feel the first time you do it. I do it quite badly. You'll notice that I actually forget to count at one point. So what you're going to do is think about what's going on. Okay, uh, Pippa, think about your favourite time of the day. Don't tell me what it is, alright? Uh, so my favourite time is probably about 6.30 in the morning, alright? You get up at 6, kids get up at 7, I have half an hour of just doing my like, You know what I mean? So but think about your, your time. I don't want, I'm going to turn around. Um, and I want you to remove the amount of cards from the top of the pack, which is your time. So if your time was 4 o'clock, you'd remove 4 cards. And just put them over there or something, so I can't see. If it was 2 o'clock, you'd remove 2 cards. Just from the top of the pack, and just bear that moment. Yeah, so I can't see how many there are, right? Now turn around where you do that. It doesn't matter if everybody else sees it. Right? And I'm not listening to the, the sound of you moving the cards or anything, I can't hear anything. So let me know when you've done it. I've done it. So once you actually clock, you've got that time in your head. And do you know what time it is now, or have you got, did you share it? Or do you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's only you that really knows it, or maybe you should be like it. So we're going to make a clock. Imagine a clock here, right? Actually, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll make it like 12, 11, 23, 5, 3 yeah. <laughs> but the weird thing is, right, if you turn around all the cards, that's 12, 11, 11, <laughs> but 3 was the only one that has been written on it. Have a look at that. Right, and what, what does it say? Okay, look in the middle of the clock and the deck of cards. Right, so that in itself is quite weird. There's no work in them, and, and the only card that was on three, that was right. Really right. Really right. Really right. It's normal deck of cards. Right, but look, check it out. One card, face down. Right. If you take the card out, what card is it? Jack of Spades. But here, the clock on that. Oh, wow! What say on the clock? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so, and and that, you get the reaction of, on the first bit, right? So you could actually, do, I think you could do this without the end bit, without the gaff deck. You could just lay the cards down and go, that's your time. So, so that's a really cool thing. Um, and you can, you can also bring the deck in in, in, in various different ways. But w without practice, it's still got that routine. So with practice and with a lot of routine and scripting, I think this could be a real stunner. And like I said before, I always kind of shied away from this thing of dealing out cards in a clock face on the table because it takes up a lot of space. But actually, when I've done it, like I said, since then I've done it one more and one more time, and you, it, it adds a bit of theatre. It's a nice visual thing to, to go on, and people kind of respond to that, and I like doing it. It felt like a nice thing to do. So in a parlour situation or in a sort of uh, sort of intimate setting, I think it's, it's, a, it's a really nice routine. And like I said, that one doesn't need anything else other than what you've got in the pack. So here's the good stuff. First of all, it's RSVP. Like I said, it's well shot. It's very clearly explained. You don't leave any of these tricks not getting it. Gary is very, very good at performing it and then uh, giving you the goods so you can then go out and, and do your stuff. Everything you need is on these DVDs. Uh, the props are built to last and that's important. So this is £33.50, I think. Um, so you, you're not going to be wanting to replace things. Now, when I did my review on the mint box, you know, that's a very expensive prop and you are going to be replacing stuff quite regularly, my feeling there. Uh, with these, the decks of cards you get, they're solid decks, they're really well made, they handle really nicely, they're printed really well, um, and they're US playing card company, so they're, they're not some kind of odd size or anything like that. And it is something a little bit different. You know, we're all looking for something different, but we all want 
we want different play strong as well. And this, even though it's a card trick, has a different feel for a number of reasons. Yes, there's the theme of time, but we've used the theme before, but we add the visual element to time, so they're looking at the clocks. And what I really like is this, what you get with, with this kind of thing, which is what I've called this moment of delayed response. Now I do a ring flight, and the thing I like about a ring flight is that when you hold the classic ring flight up and you've got keys hanging down and the ring's in the middle, it takes them a moment to sort of, to realize what's down. Now that can be a nightmare with timing and stuff like that, but in close up I think it's good because they look and then they see something and then they look again and then you get that, that thing. And that's what happens when they look at these clocks on the cards. Um, with this time travel trick, you know, they do this and they turn it over and the, the watch that was previously printed there is now smashed. So I, I, I think it adds something unexpected and, and that's what we're looking for in our magic. Now it doesn't mean it's stronger because of it, sometimes it is, but it, it adds a bit of moment of strange, which I talk about a lot, which, are, which Paul Harris talks about in the uh, Art of Astonishment. So these are doable as well. Now it doesn't mean you're not gonna have to practice. I don't think there's a trick in the world. You might call it self-working, it's not. You're gonna have to practice it. You're gonna have to be unconsciously competent at it in order to perform. There needs to be some element of time before you go out and perform it. I wish some people uh, would take that into consideration more. What I'm trying to say is, you're not going to open this and have to do five pharaoh shuffles in a second bottom deal or anything like that, okay? It's, it's simple stuff in comparison with most things. Most of you are going to be all right. And if you're not, hey, practice a bit, you know? That's all right. That's what we do, isn't it? So, uh, and you're not going to have to practice much. So challenges for me, uh, nothing, like I said, I don't really like reviewing stuff I hate. So, so you know, I'm not going to slate anything, but uh, unless you send me a real shocker, that'd be quite interesting. But the only challenges with this for me, maybe it's not going to suit everybody because of the theme. You might not be into that sort of thing. It's not really something I don't think I'm going to put into my, you know, if I've got 20 tables to get around, I'm probably not going to put put this in there, you know, because it takes a little bit of focus. I think anything with a little bit of process, I prefer to, to do in a sort of quieter setting. Now, it doesn't mean if I don't get to a table and I've only got five tables to get around, this is the sort of stuff I'll get out and if people can hear me clearly, um, but it's not a kind of worker in that way, but it is a worker in a kind of more intimate setting, great for parlor, I think even really good for stage, or if you've got a little bit of time to sit with someone. Um, the only real other challenge for me is that Two of, the, two of the effects you need a watch for. One of them you need a specific kind of watch for, so you're, you're limited by, by that consideration there. But I would say with the second hand trick, you know, which is my favorite trick, I am definitely gonna be getting a watch in order to do that. Now, it's not that expensive, isn't it? You can even borrow one, you can even get one second hand. So I think this is a lovely set, and I'm really glad that Russ sent it to me. I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you missed this, and I did back in 2012. Um, and it's not, you know, we, we think that magic gets better. You know, we, we tend to think that, you know, the, the further we advance, the older we get, the more magic, the more advanced magic gets. It doesn't really work like that. I think the, the best stuff I find is old. You know, it's, it's going back to ideas. So I think this is a real, a real one to go back to. If you've got it sitting on your shelf or you haven't got it, check it out. Um, a fitting tribute to Bill Thompson as well, who's a friend of Russ Stevens, like I said. Um, it has been made with care. The way Russ talked to me about this, you know, he said, if you, if you, if you check this out, he obviously cares a lot about it. And he was saying it's one of his favorite things that he's, he's put out. So, and, and I, don't, I don't blame him really. It's different, it's cool, it's quirky, uh, and it's really good fun. And that's why we do it, right? So uh, there it is, the Timeless Project. Uh, Russ Stevens, Gary Jones, RSVP, and of course, Bill Thompson. Uh, go and check it out, £33.50, I think, on RSVP, but I'm sure we can get it lots of different places. So thank you very much. As I said before, please check out cardmagiccourse.com, like and subscribe, and get your free cull download. There's like four videos, three or four videos on there of how to do the spread cull, which is such a powerful move. You need to know how to do it. And it's a free, it's the one off the course, all right? So it isn't like I've shortened it to make it free. It's the whole tutorial. Uh, and check out the Instagram Card Magic Course. Okay, have a good one. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. Uh, I'm going to be at the session next week if you're watching it in real time. So come and say hi at the session convention. I can't make a lot of magic conventions because I have shared care with my kids and all that kind of thing. So uh, it's a rare trip out for me. So come and say hello. I will be taking this stuff down with me. So I might be doing a couple of reviews from there. So do check that out and uh, hope to see you there. Take care.